I'm Professor P. K. S. Men from Department of Mechanical Engineering. Today I will be ta taking a lecture on impulse momentum method for connected bodies for the course in Engineering Mechanics with course code BTME 2001. So let us first take a recap what we have uh, done uh, earlier what we know earlier first is the force multiplied by time and if it is integrated over a period of time is called an impulse so if you look at the first point 0 to 2 e is in uh, integration 0 to time t uh, uh, the product of R dt is called impulse. R is the force in Newton and dt is the time duration in seconds. So the integration units of impulse would be Newton into second. So uh, that is called impulse. So mass into velocity is called momentum of body. It also have the unit Newton into second mass into velocity is nothing but newton into second and uh, if u is the initial velocity of the body and small v is the final velocity of body after time the inti uh, impulse momentum method says that impulse is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum that is integration 0 to t r dt equal to m into u small u minus m into small v so but there is a precondition on it the impulse momentum equation holds good only if the direction of the initial velocity u the final velocity v and the force r are same so all three must have same direction and the components of resultant linear impulse along any direction is equal to change of component of momentum in that direction means if you are uh, having a velocity which is neither aligned toward cartesian coordinate x axis neither uh, uh, aligned with uh, y axis so you can break the velocity into x component and y component so the x component of the uh, rx would be a uh, nothing but uh, dependent upon the rate of change of linear momentum in x direction and the ry uh, would be the rate uh, will depend upon the rate of change of the impulse in the y direction so you can break the uh, linear momentum into uh, as per the Cartesian coordinates also. Now in uh, today's lecture what we will try to do uh, we will try to do apply uh, I am uh, integration uh, integral momentum equation for the connected bodies when we have two rigid bodies connected to a thread or wire or rope by a system of bodies so we are talking of a system of body and we try to apply the impulse momentum method on these bodies uh, then we will see uh, the case of a turbine vein uh, as you know the turbine is uh, used for uh, generating power so the any integral uh, momentum equation is used to analyze what is the force uh, on jet is uh, created by uh, impeding jet uh, when it uh, interacts with the vein of the turbine blade and then uh, we will try to derive law of conservation of momentum from the integral momentum equation and then in for civil engineering and for foundation making foundations and in borings uh, of the tube wells we generally use pile hammer so we will try to understand the concept of pile hammer so let us uh, see this is a figure in which i have shown 
two connected bodies of one of weight W1, other one of weight W2. They are connected over the two inclined planes. Inclined first plane is inclined at theta1, second plane is inclined at an angle theta2. Both weight W1 and W2 are connected by a thread, uh, by a rope, flexible rope uh, passing over a pulley. So, uh, let, uh, this is an example of two connected bodies, each having weight of W1 and W2 newtons. And generally, pulley is considered to be smooth and frictionless. But the coefficient of friction between the weight and the inclined plane, W1 and the inclined plane at theta1 and W2 and inclined plane theta2 is, uh, should be known to us. Then only we will anal able to analyze these connected bodies. So, there are two approaches to uh, solve the problems of the connected bodies. The first is that the problem involving connected bodies may be solved by one of the following two methods. First method, the phi body diagram of each body is drawn separately. Uh, an impulse momentum equation for each body in direction of its motion is written and then an equation is solved to get the required values. If uh, we uh, recall uh, as per the previous figure, the, uh, we will write two impulse momentum equation for one for body with weight W1 at the inclined plane uh, with angle theta1 and other one for the, uh, weight W2 uh, moving on the inclined plane at an angle theta2. So, two momentum equations we will write and two free body diagram of uh, both uh, weight W1 and W2 will be drawn separately and then uh, the combined set of equations is solved to get the required value. The second solution approach is slightly simple. If the <coughs> Both the connected bodies uh, are connected in such a way that uh, the distance traveled by first body that is weight W1 and the distance traveled by the second body W2 is uh, basically same. The velocity, the displacement say X1 uh, is traveled or the displacement of weight W1 and X2 is the weight uh, W and same displacement X, uh, is uh, uh, done by weight W2, then uh, we can apply the second solution approach. So, the first precondition for uh, writing, not writing multiple equation instead of writing a combined equation is that the connecting bodies should have the displacement, same displacement in the same time. Time should also not be different and the, the displacement of the both the body should not be different. Uh, so, uh, in, the inter, in that case, the impulse of the internal tensions of connecting cords will be cancelled. As you saw, uh, know the, the first body will be having some time, putting some tension on the cord. Uh, and second body will also be putting some tension on the cord. Uh, those tension impulse uh, will be cancelled. Hence, what we can do? When both bodies are moving same distance in a same time period, then the free body diagram of combined body may be considered. And the impulse momentum equation is applied in the direction of motion of the combined bodies, whether it is moving as uh, the weight W1 is sliding down or W2 will slide down, uh, you will apply only one impulse momentum and uh, that would be in the direction of motion of both combined weight system W1 and W2. So, uh, the final takeaway is that this method is applicable only if displacement of each body is same in the given time. Now, uh, with these two approaches, uh, we will solve these approaches uh, in uh, numericals uh, based on these approaches in a separate lecture. But uh, let us see how uh, the turbine vanes are uh, uh, used for generating power. <coughs> 
so what happens when a water jet impinges on a turbine blade it changes its direction the vanes are very smooth and almost frictionless so the inlet velocity and the exit velocity of the blade is almost same and uh, in hydro uh, power station this impulse movement principle can be used so what is first stage the water jet is made to impinge uh, impinge on the turbine blades when it impinges and comes in contact with the turbine blade it slides or glides over the turbine blade and the blades are perfectly smooth as they are made by a manufacturing process which is having very low surface roughness and high surface finish and that uh, method is very costly it is known as investment casting so uh, the turbine blades are made by investment casting they are extremely smooth so coefficient of friction is very very less and hence the water jet glides over the curved blade surfaces uh, and gets deflected at a certain angle so if you look at the laser pointer say the jet is moving initially in, the, in this direction then it comes in contact of the vane which is say uh, inclined at this shape and then it leaves tangentially to the outlet direction so what happens when the velocity remains same uh, when the speed remains same but the direction change the velocity will change when the velocity will change the momentum will change because the body has changed its direction of movement and hence the linear momentum principle will say the movement in x direction has changed and similarly the movement linear momentum in the y direction has changed and hence it will generate an impulse on the wing and that impulse basically rotates the uh, blades so as the velocity vector changes its direction the force is ex exerted on the turbine wheel which in turn causes rotation of turbine when certain force is acting on a turbine and it is rotating with velocity and uh, the center of rotation is different than the point of application of force then it will generate a torque and angular velocity and torque multiplied by angular velocity is nothing but power generation and hence the power will be generated by the turbine and what has happened actually actually the mechanical engineer uh, energy is converted into electrical energy by generator uh, as it is coupled with the rotating turbine vanes the force exerted by a water jet can be determined easily by applying impulse momentum equation so that is the process how the force of jet on vane is calculated here i want to show the figure this is a nozzle what is the use of nozzle the water at high pressure from a dam or some uh, uh, reservoir at height is coming so the pressure is high and the velocity is low at the inlet of knowledge nozzle but as the water is incompressible the continuity equation can be applied and as the area of nozzle at the outlet is small then the area of pipe the uh, a1 u1 equal to a2 u2 means the velocity at the lower area point would be more you know from the bernoulli's and equation and continuity equation so it will uh, be a high velocity the pressure energy is converted into velocity head and the water jet comes out at a higher velocity small v from the nozzle now if you see a vane which i have shown here uh, with uh, which is deflecting water at an angle theta so you see the initial velocity vector is directed in the x direction and the second velocity vector which is leaving the uh, vane due to the contact of the vane is directed at an angle theta but the velocity remains same as small v in turn the, there are two change of linear momentum one in the x direction other in y direction and both of them 
can be calculated by the applying IM equation in the X direction and IM equation in the Y direction. If you look at the uh, resultant of these two impulse forces, the fo impulse force will may, uh, try to push the in the direction of a uh, blue vector to the wind and hence it will start rotating about the center of the uh, uh, turbine. So, uh, that is how the water jet changing direction uh, generates a force on the wind. So, if we look at the uh, now can we uh, the question is we can we apply uh, the impulse momentum math equation I am equation to uh, see whether it is following the law of principle of conservation because it is a universal law and hence it should be obeyed. So, let us see uh, the I am equation. I am equation says the impulse equal to final momentum minus initial momentum and if R is equal to 0 that the impulse is 0, uh, the resisting force in Newton is 0, then I am equation will be transformed into final momentum equal to initial momentum. Means if the impulse is 0, the left hand side is 0, the right hand side can be easily said final momentum should be equal to initial momentum. And what is that? This is nothing but the conservation of momentum and hence this is the fine principle of conservation of momentum and it can be stated as the momentum is conserved in a system in which the resultant force is 0, R should be 0. Alternatively, we can say in the is in a system in which the resultant force is 0, initial momentum will remain equal to final momentum. Now, one most important point to be noted is that the law of conservation of momentum applies to the system, but not to the individual element of the system. So, do not consider the system, you consider the whole system and break it into small parts and then apply conservation of momentum on separate parts. No, you have to take the system of connecting bodies as a whole. Now, the last concept we will discuss today is the uh, concept of pile hammer. In pile hammer, basically, uh, if you understand, uh, pile is a heap of the soil which is loosely packed and we want to uh, increase its packing density. So, what we do that we put a hammer on it and a weight which I have shown here that is uh, falling from the certain height h on this pile hammer and which in turns when it hits the body, uh, the hammer, uh, the combined system of this weight of the falling weight and the hammer weight will move together because it will uh, give you some impulse uh, reaction force to the uh, pile hammer. And uh, what will be the resistance to move, uh, to stop the pile hammer? That would be the resistance of this surrounding earth, surrounding sand, which will uh, not permit hammer to go freely into it, but uh, due to high impulse energy, which is imparted into the pile hammer system, uh, it goes down and in turn specs the, uh, increases the packing density of the soil. So, uh, that is the purpose of a pile hammer and the working method of pile hammer. Generally, safe bearing capacity of soil is too less and hence the set of reinforced concrete or steel poles are driven into soil and such poles are known as piles. Over a group of piles, concrete cap is cast and onto this the structure is built. And the piles are driven by pile hammer. It consists of a movable weight called the hammer. The hammer is raised to a convenient height h and freely drop. It is guided to fall over the pile and after the hammer strikes the pile, the hammer and pile is move, uh, moves the, uh, downwards as a combined unit or together. So, uh, the kinetic energy of the pile and the hammer is utilized in doing work against the resistance of ground 
and the pile gets driven uh, by a distance small s. By repeated hammering, the pile is driven into to the earth by a required depth, and if the distance moved per blow is known, earth resistance to the movement of pile can be calculated easily. And the summary of this is that uh, today's lecture is that the impulse uh, is nothing but uh, the difference of final momentum mi minus initial momentum and integral momentum equation can be applied to solve variety of problems like connected bodies, force of jet on vein and pile hammer. It is very useful for solving practical problems. Next is the question, uh, I, I request you to uh, try to establish the governing equation of pile hammer. If small w is the weight of the hammer, capital W is the weight of pile, h is the drop height of hammer, s is the distance traveled by pile and r is the resistance of earth, then uh, you have to do three things. Mm, part A, prove the resistance of earth R equal to small w plus capital W plus small w square h and the combined weight w plus w by s. The power loss kinetic energy, this expression, second expression you have to prove and the third is the time during which pile is in motion is you have to establish these three equation given in uh, part A, B and C. That is your home practice problem. So today's talk, uh, textbooks we uh, have talked uh, is basically SS Bhavikatti and the reference books are Rao and Young, uh, uh, Beers uh, Vector Mechanics and Shames Engineering Mechanics. So that's all for today. Thanks and Happy learning.